I was young, I really liked sleeping out in a tent. It was fun, exciting, and didn't cost a lot. Yeah. Even though tenting is really inexpensive, yeah, right now, I think I'd rather have a house with some heating and air conditioning. And yeah, it's not like I need it, but I want it. In my house, I have abundant electricity, so I can make coffee, run a microwave, watch TV, whatever I want. It's no problem. I'm now considering replacing my wet cell uh, six volt golf cart batteries, with lithium batteries. Uh, yeah, they've been very economical and reliable, but I want something more. Everybody's different, has different needs, and there's actually no bad battery types, so uh, let me review my choices here. My original dual-use batteries didn't last very long, maybe a year and a half. First, of course, are the wet cell batteries, like the six-volt uh, golf cart ones that I have. They're definitely the most economical for part-time RVers. Really, if you're not going to spend a lot of time in your RV, you don't need to spend a lot of money on it. If you normally stop at campgrounds for the night and have electricity, uh, yeah, you aren't going to need much battery power. So they'll run fine uh, running all your lights and your, even your compressor refrigerator. However, if you're not plugged in the shore power and you're running high power uh, devices like microwaves, uh, hair dryers, or uh, coffee makers, that kind of stuff, then uh, yeah, you might find them a bit lacking. They just do not handle high currents very well. I know when I run my microwave, I'm pulling 130 amps from the batteries and they're really not recommended to pull over 100 from uh, these batteries. It kind of limits my capacity. The well, next step up in batteries from the um, from the deep cycle ones are AGM batteries. Uh, yeah, those are lead acid batteries also, but uh, they're a little better and you don't have to put water in them. They're maintenance free, so it has some conveniences like that. But uh, they do cost more, probably two or three times more than the than the Costco golf cart batteries. They also tend to last longer and uh, have they can have a little more capacity depending on which one you get. That brings us to the superstars of RV batteries, and that is the lithium batteries. Uh, yes, they have many advantages. Uh, they're better in almost all ways to the other lead acid batteries. They store a lot more energy in them. You can discharge them down to a zero without damaging them. They're much lighter than lead acid batteries. They're going to charge faster. They work great in high power applications like using the microwave and making your coffee and uh, running your refrigerator. They're also going to last a very long time probably as long as your RV does. So uh, yeah, at least 10 years, probably more. So if they're so great, then why doesn't everybody buy them? Well, for one thing, they are still quite expensive. I've been waiting for these uh, Battleborn uh, batteries to come down in price. They were like $1,000 a piece and you need two. So that's $2,000. Uh, and they've come down in price to, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred dollars less than that. However, that's not the whole cost. Uh, you also have to change the charging systems. All your ways of charging the batteries have to change, whether it's solar, from your alternator, from the shore power, um, yeah, <laughs> and you can't even use your trickle charger. So, so probably the main disadvantage for lithium is the cost. Yeah, it may cost you $1,800 for a couple of Batterborn uh, batteries, but that's just the beginning. You also have to uh, change all your charging systems around. Since the lithium batteries don't have the same charging profile or voltage, as the lead acid batteries. Uh, as a matter of fact, as I said, it can charge and discharge very fast. Well, <laughs> it has the capacity to suck the life right out of your alternator. I've just sucked one year of your life away. I might one day go as high as five, but I really don't know what that would do to you. You have to install some other DC-DC converters or that kind of stuff. So by the time you get done with it, you're probably looking at uh, at least $2,500 if you do it yourself, uh, maybe more. Um, of course, you could always buy the cheap uh, Chinese batteries, but yeah. I would not buy this battery, personally. This is not something I would want to have in my possession. The only other minor disadvantage is you can't charge your lithium batteries uh, when it's below freezing, uh, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, most of the uh, systems built into the batteries will prevent you from doing that and damaging them anyway. So I've been getting by with the golf cart batteries for many, many years, but uh, 
yeah, I just uh, want to step up and get a little more convenience. Uh, the lithium ion batteries are going to give me a lot more capacity, so I won't have to worry about the voltage in the morning because in the mornings when we want to make the coffee and run the microwave, and yeah, the batteries just don't hold up very well in that high current draw, so I decided on the server rack battery uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it's uh, pretty inexpensive. It's cheaper than the Battleborn per watt hour or amp hour. Uh, but also, uh, thinking ahead, I'd really like to get rid of the diesel generator someday. And a couple of these server racks would probably fit in there just great and provide plenty of power for everything, including the air conditioning. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get one to start off and just test it out and see how it works. So that battery pack is coming from Texas. Uh, so it should be in pretty soon and I'll make another video on how it works, but uh, this is going to be a testing phase so I'm going to test it to see how they work versus the golf cart batteries. So until then, see you on the road.